Hello, welcome to Five Science Tutorials. And um, I received uh, this question as a, a request from um, a, a student, I, I believe, uh, who wanted me to help out in um, solving this question. So as you can see, it's a circular motion question on the, on the screen, you can see it here. Yeah. So it's about uh, deriving the formulas. So in this video, we'll be able to derive these formulas that you are seeing here on the screen. <clears throat> now, have you subscribed yet to the YouTube channel? If you have not yet subscribed this, to this YouTube channel, kindly subscribe. And also you can share with others, hit on the notification bell button so that you get notified each time uh, we upload new content and coming uh, 2022 January we'll be posting also videos uh, of mathematical methods of um, chemistry and also those who've done who've uh, majored in mathematics and physics will have uh, videos for them as well so this is the right channel to be at Okay, so let's dive in uh, into solving this question. So the question says a circular curve of radius R in a new highway is designed so that a car traveling at a speed V0 can negotiate the turn safely on gray ice, that is zero friction. If a car travels too slow, then it will slip towards the center of the circle. No, sorry, the center of the, yeah, of the circle. If it travels too fast, then it will slip away from the center of the circle. If the coefficient of static increases, a car can stay on the road while traveling at any speed within the range, uh, minimum velocity and uh, maximum velocity. Show that the minimum and the maximum velocity are given by these equations. Okay. So when you look at this question, um, what should come into your mind first is that indeed this is circular motion and you have also to look at it in two uh, perspectives. The first one is uh, when there is absence, okay, absence of uh, uh, friction force, okay. You can see in the first, uh, the first two uh, sentences or lines you can see there. So there is no friction force in the first two lines, okay? And secondly is when friction force is involved, what happens? So this is how we are going to tackle this question from two perspectives. So the first one, it's going to, when there is no friction force, it's going to help us to come up with uh, the equation that shows the relationship between the V0 and uh, other, other parameters. Yeah, okay, the V0 and other parameters, which we are going to see. So now, on the right side, uh, I have drawn uh, this free body diagram here. This is a free body diagram I've drawn. So now, this free body diagram, there is no friction force. Remember, it's a uh, uh, banking. Um, okay. This is banking curve. So now, it is at an angle. My car in green. There is the car in green. So it is at an angle uh, theta, okay? Now, since it is at an angle theta, I know uh, you must be able, you must have done vectors. Uh, so you know how to, to do the, how to, to, to do the resolving of forces or of vectors, okay? So now, since, this car is at that angle, meaning we have to resolve the normal force. Okay. We have to resolve the normal force into two components, which is the x and the 
vertical component. So now, these have uh, resolved the, the horizontal component is that one and the vertical component is that one. Okay, so now you can see that this is towards the center okay, of the circle. So if you have the, this is the road and the car is moving like that. So that is the center, it's the radius R. So since it's moving in a secular form, this is secular motion, it's going to have the, there's going to be centripetal force and also centripetal acceleration. So the force that is causing the centripetal acceleration is the centripetal force. Okay, so now the net force here, the net centripetal force is actually this force in the horizontal, which is uh, the, uh, the horizontal component of the uh, normal force, which is Fn sine theta. So Fn is just mean normal force. Uh, some you write it as capital letter N to represent the normal force. But here I'm using Fn, F with the subscript, uh, N. Okay, so now, <clears throat> according to Newton's second law of motion, it says the summation of forces, okay, it's given by that. So now, this is in two dimension, so we have to also write these uh, equations in two dimensions. So for the X, let's start with the X or horizontal. So we're going to have the summation of forces in the X is given by mass times acceleration in the X. And this acceleration in the X is actually the centripetal acceleration. So what are the forces in the X? What we have is the normal force sine theta being equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. This is where we, we find the centripetal acceleration. Now, remember the relationship also of centripetal acceleration and velocity. The centripetal acceleration is given by the V naught square, um, sorry, velocity squared of the radius. Okay, now this velocity that we are going to have, remember that friction is absent and in the first two lines, that velocity is actually the V naught. So we are going to have normal force sine theta equal to mass times V naught squared over R, like that. So let that be our first equation. So now we also look at the vertical, uh, vertical motion, but we can see that in the vertical, there is no motion, okay? There is no motion in the vertical. So since there is no motion in the vertical, what we're going to have, or Newton's second law of motion is going to look like this. Forces X, M, A, Y. So we can see that there is no motion, meaning this will be equal to zero. Okay, so what are the forces acting in the vertical on that object or on that car? So we have the vertical component of the normal force, force theta minus the, the weight of that car, which is mg. This should be equal to zero. So we can, write this in this form, taking the mg the other side. So we can also divide by force theta both sides and normal force is going to be mg over cos theta. So this is our second equation. So this is our second equation. Now, taking, so because of space, 
uh, should I say because of space? Okay, I'll write down here. We are going to take equation two into equation one. So where there is Fn in equation one, we are going to substitute with mg over cos theta. So we are going to have mg this side over cos theta times sine theta is equal to m v naught squared over r. Okay. So we can see that m and m cancels. And here we're going to have sine theta over cos theta. We are going to have tan. So we have g tan theta equal to v naught squared over r. So we can have tan theta being equal to v naught squared over r g. Okay. So that is the relationship. Question three. That is the relationship of the V naught when there is no uh, friction force and um, the banking angle. So we have tan theta. Theta is the banking angle, and we have V naught squared over R G. Okay. So we are done with the first part, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you are aware of this part. It's not very new. Uh, to you, so we need it. So let's get back to the diagram. So now, they are telling us that, so let's start with the maximum velocity. Let's start with the maximum. They're telling us that if the car, if the car travels too fast, then it will slip away from the center of the circle. So if this car is traveling at a, at a faster speed, which is, happens to be, we take it maximum speed, okay? It's going to slip away. So it will be slipping away in that direction. Let me use another color. it will be slipping away from the center because the center is in that direction. That is the center, okay? So it will slip away, to slip away in that direction. So now, if the car is slipping away in this direction, it means friction force is the, is the opposing force. So friction force will be actually in this direction. Okay, we're going to have friction force in that direction. And when you look at this friction force, it is also at an angle, okay? It is also at an angle, which it has to be resolved. And the angle, again, it's sharing the same banking angle, which is theta, okay? So since this is our friction force, okay? This is our friction force we have to resolve this friction force. And if we are to resolve the friction force, we see that we have the horizontal component and the vertical component like that. I believe you are seeing. Okay. Okay, like that. So we have the vertical and the horizontal component because that is that. So now, since this is what we have, that is the, 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 the force that we have, meaning we are going to have the components, we are going to have a friction force, the friction force, which is in the vertical, it's going to be friction force, sine theta, and in the horizontal, it's going to be friction force cos theta. 
Okay, so we have that return false. So we've added something here, okay? Now, since we've added something which is friction force, we can also rewrite, okay? Let's rewrite the Newton's second law of motion. Okay, so how is it going to look like? It's going to look like this. In the, in the horizontal, we start from in the horizontal. In the horizontal, uh, we've added uh, another force, which is the horizontal component of the friction force. So now, Uh, we are going to have normal force sine theta plus the friction force cos theta. And this should be equal to mv squared over r. We are getting the maximum uh, velocity here. So this v now is the maximum velocity we've introduced the friction force and we are told that when there is a static friction okay or when static friction uh coefficient of static uh, static increases we have the minimum and the maximum speed so that is how it's going to look now remember that uh, friction force Okay, friction force is given by nu times normal force. Okay, nu times the normal force gives the friction force. So we are going to substitute where there is the friction force, okay, with nu times normal force. So we are going to have normal force sine theta plus nu fn cos theta is equal to m v squared, this is maximum over r, like that, okay. So that is what we have first, and then we can, um, we can write this to be equation four, okay? Let that be equation four. And then in the vertical now, in the vertical, we don't have still uh, motion. So in the vertical, it's also going to be, uh, how is it going to be? It's going to be the vertical component of the normal force minus the vertical component of the friction force minus mg equal to zero. Okay, so here we also substitute, this is friction, static friction, uh, k normal sine theta minus mg equal to zero. Okay, so we have this equation and this can be our equation five. So here now, what it is now is to play with these equations. We need to play with these equations now. Okay, so now we have these equations. So we need to play with equation four and uh, equation five. Okay, equation four and the equation five. So how do you do or how do we do it? We are going to start by saying, okay, let us, uh, 
in the first equation, we factor out uh, normal force. So if we factor out normal force in equation four, oh, well, it's too thick. Factoring out Fn in uh, equation four, we're going to have Fn sine theta plus nu is cos theta equal to mv squared max over r like that one okay so now we can also do the same to this uh, equation okay equation five equation five we are going to have um, uh, we're going to have normal force cos theta minus nu s sine theta equal to mg. I've taken mg the other side, okay? I've taken the mg the other side, so I can divide both sides by cos theta minus nu s sine theta. Cos theta minus nu s sine theta also this side. Okay. <clears throat> so once I do that, this and that cancels. So what I'm going to have, I'm going to have the normal force being equal to mg over cos theta minus nu s sine theta, like that. That's going to be my equation, I think, seven, okay? So now I'll take this equation into the other equation that we factored out there. Remember this equation? I'm going to take it in this equation, in this one, in equation four. So this equation is looking like this, often sine theta plus nu cos theta equal to mv max squared over r. It's looking like that. So I'm going to take this equation seven into here, into this equation. So. I'm going to have something like m g over cos theta minus minus sine theta, okay? Multiplying by sine theta plus s cos theta equal to mv squared max over r, okay? So I have uh, this equation, I believe you are following, you are following through. Okay, so we can see here from this equation that M and M can go like that. And then we want to have, um, we want to have V max alone. 
as the subject of the formula. So we multiply by R both sides, okay? Or throughout the equation, we multiply by R and we're going to have something like this. R G sine theta plus mm, is cos theta over cos theta minus mm, is sine theta. This is equal to V max squared. Okay. Wow. So now, we're still playing with uh, this, uh, this equation. So what if we factor out on the numerator, okay? On the numerator, we factor out the sine, sine theta, and also on the denominator, we factor out cos theta, okay? I hope you, you can now see the equation coming out now. So we're going to have, Rig here on top we factor out sine theta and down we factor out cos theta. So we are going to have one here plus mu cos theta over sine theta over. Okay, so this goes up to here. And here, if we factor out, we're going to have one minus mu sine theta over cos theta. Equal to V max squared. Okay, so now, when you look at sine theta over cos theta, it gives us tan theta. Okay, so we're going to have Rg tan theta here. And here we have one plus, and uh, this one actually, what's going to give us? Cos theta over sine theta in terms of tan, okay? In terms of tan, what is it going to give us? It's actually one over tan, okay? One over tan. So we are going to have, mu s over tan theta. Okay. And then that is just the, the numerator. And then here we're going to have one minus s tan theta. This equal to v max square. Wow. Now, <clears throat> Remember the relationship that we derived, this relationship, and don't want to lose you, I didn't erase. This relationship here. Tan theta is equal to V naught squared over Rg, our equation three. If you're writing equation three, check the equation three. Okay, so equation three, we have um, tan theta being equal to V naught squared divided by Rg, that's equation three. So we substitute wherever there is tan theta with V naught squared uh, time over Rg. So we're going to have Rg multiplying by V naught squared over Rg one plus u naught divided by v naught squared over rg. Also here one minus u times v naught over rg squared. So this and that will cancel. And then we're going to have V naught squared, which is multiplying one plus 
is here if we divide we are going to have rg over v naught squared over one minus yes v naught over rg this is equal to the maximum velocity so you can see that we have uh, arrived so we have um, we can square both sides so if we square both sides we're going to have v max squared is actually equal to v naught squared one plus s rg over v naught squared over one minus mu s v naught squared over rg so we can see that v naught is a square so we factor out that v naught and then we are going to remain with one plus that rg over v naught squared over one minus mu s v naught over rg and i think hence shown well let's see first the from the question okay so from the question <clears throat> Is that what we have? Yes. The maximum velocity, you can see it's here that we've been given. Yes, our G. Okay. So this is how you get the maximum velocity. Well, it was nice. So, uh, in the next video, I'll be showing you how to get the minimum. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Here, after squaring both sides, I've uh, continued using uh, the square, sorry, like this. Okay, so in the next video, I'll be showing you how to get a minimum uh, velocity. Um, otherwise, it's not difficult all you need to know is about the direction of the friction force where is the friction force that is where you need to to, to not actually when getting the minimum velocity otherwise it's not difficult from this so in the next video it will be the continuation from here we'll continue to find uh to derive the equation for max uh, minimum velocity thank you for watching See you in the next video.